So my name is Dr. Rebecca Pillay Riddell. I'm a registered clinical psychologist. I'm the York Research Chair in Pain and Mental Health, and I'm an associate professor here in the Department of Psychology and an adjunct associate professor at the University of Toronto in the Department of Psychiatry. So my research is with infants in pain, and I guess for over the past decade, I've been dedicating to understanding, dedicating my program of research into understanding how infants and caregivers interact in pain contexts. So for the first decade, I, I feel like I've been working really on following a cohort of infants. There were 760 of them to start, all the way from infant, their two-month infant immunizations to now we have a group of about 175 that we followed all the way to their preschool immunizations. In doing that work, I was able to realize that a really interesting thing is that in these immunizations, while my, my work was initially to really just understand the development of pain responses, I realized that this was a great opportunity to interweave infant mental health in primary care. So in the process of analyzing over 2,000 immunizations with infants and their caregivers and how they interacted, we've actually designed the OUCHI the opportunities to understand childhood hurt immunization evaluation. And our goal right now for the OUCHI program of research that I run is to integrate these checklists so that immunizing health professionals like physicians or nurses can actually screen for some red flag behaviors after an infant gets a needle, not only in how they calm down after a needle, but also in how their caregiver helps, them, helps support their regulation after the needle. Because negative affect regulation is a cornerstone for mental health. And I think that if we can integrate it into primary care, we can actually really integrate mental health protection and resilience earlier in life than we have to this day. So what we were able to do is that we videotaped and coded, behavioral coded, using gold standard measures of infant behavior, caregiver behavior, and of the infant caregiver interaction. And so we really focused on how the infant reacted to the painful needle. 90, I'd say 95% of infants really react strongly to an infant uh, immunization needle. But we also noticed that what was actually more predictive in the mental health outcomes, both in the infancy and at preschool, was actually what the caregiver was doing. So watching how the caregiver reacted to the infant in pain is actually where a lot of our items on this OUCHI checklist are coming from. And really, what really made me passionate was that infants can't speak for themselves. So when an infant is in pain, they rely completely on their caregiver to assess their pain accurately and to manage their pain. And what we were finding is, especially in the medical system, there were these failures to acknowledge that infants were in pain or being very wary of managing an infant pain, an infant in pain, because you were worried about uh, the implications of opioids or pain medications and how that would affect the developing infant, which we understand, but I think now we're evolving more and more, not only to learn about more about medications and how to medicate, but also non-pharmacological ways to empower nurses and parents and physicians to help manage an infant's pain so that without having to use medications. Early intervention is important, that we actually can start screening for infant mental health challenges during immunization. We know that how an infant calms down after any stress um, using the attachment relationship, their, their connection to their parent is very important. And I think that we can actually bring this knowledge into primary care by integrating that knowledge into a 30 second checklist that physicians and nurses could use to start helping dyads, mothers and children or fathers and children who are having difficulty knowing how to soothe their baby when they are really distressed. We are clinical assessment facility, so we have lots of different video capture equipment, but we also have it inter, uh, interwoven with physiological equipment. So we have heart rate, galvanic skin response, these sorts of things for both the, the adult and the child, in addition to having a, a whole set of infant cognitive processing sorts of activities in terms of testing how an infant's motor development or an early child's intelligence and their emotions and their reactions. So we were able to purchase basically everything we needed to know to um, really get a, a good snapshot of an infant or an early child's cognitive, emotional, social, and behavioral profile.
Well, I think I get to profit from being a professor at York and actually being cross-appointed at U of T. I think there have been a number of things that have been facilitated. One of the things is that because York doesn't have the medical school or the faculty of medicine, being able to collaborate with um, professors at U of T like in pharmacy or nursing in particular or um, in psychiatry just to be able to interface with my research because so much of my research is in medical environments. So being able to be a professor that gets access to collaborators at U of T, I think that it's, it's really helped my, my work because it gets to be multidisciplinary. It's not just psychology. It's really the interface of medicine and psychology. And I truly get to do that with my connection to U of T.